Hi everyone, welcome. Um, we are Alana and Lisa and Lauren. We, Alana and I are co-founders of The Gut Stuff. We are identical twins, although Lauren does look like she could potentially. <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> um, where are you in the womb too? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we can explain a bit about The Gut Stuff in a minute, but um, Lauren is our chief fermenter, chief recipe maker, community manager, all round legend. <laughs> can do anything, can make any ferments, end of. <laughs> and now offer. Um, so yeah, we, um, Alan and I started the gut stuff, it feels like a hundred years ago, but it was, it was fairly recently. Um, we were primarily DJs and uh, probably as far from women's health and the health and wellbeing industry as you can possibly imagine. But we volunteer for Twin Research where we um, basically sent our lots of poo off in the post, sorry for a cook along, uh, and brownies. Here's what we're talking about, brownies. <laughs> um, and uh, had our guts analysed. Um, and they found out in our bodies that even though we have 100% the same DNA, as you can see, it's fairly similar, we only have around 30 to 40% the same microbiome. So this set us on, on a bit of a quest. Um, historically, you know, we used to do the cabbage soup diet, speaking of cabbage as well, um, pre-Magaluf pre 2005. And that was kind of like restriction was, uh, and diet was our main sort of touch point with nutrition. And what we were learning when we were going through the science was actually going back to basics and lots of simple things that we've all kind of known for a long time were potentially the key to, you know, looking after our gut health. And also going back to basics and learning about what our gut actually was. So we set up the gut stuff essentially to tell our pals that. And now it's a, it's a bit of a bigger beast than that. But recipes um, is a massive, massive part, part of what we do because we want to, you know, make the science accessible. And when we're learning the science and biology, what can we do to kind of get it into our lives? And fermentation feels like something that you know should happen over here and only a few people do it but we're here to like bring it back and hopefully make it quite cool now despite popular belief um fermented foods were not created in east london in the 90s <laughs> they've been around <laughs> since neolithic times and um, they're often associated with quite a hefty price tag so we're talking in some stores you know eight pound for uh, a jar of sauerkraut which I'm sorry to break the news to you. It's not some magic elixir of health. It is essentially cabbage in a jar. Uh, and to that effect, a lot of us wouldn't even think about putting in our shopping baskets because we don't know what it is. However, it really doesn't need to be expensive. And once you've learned the basic principles of fermenting, you can make fermented foods really easily at home and ferment a lot more things than you think. Um, also, a quick note about shop ferments. Always check that they do contain live bacteria and aren't pasteurized. Otherwise, you'll lose the potential potential benefits. We'll get on to why there's potential benefits um, that the community of microbes might bring. Um, so we know that diet can have a huge impact on our gut microbes. Diversity and fiber. Um, yes, we're also here to bring fiber back. Um, ain't sexy, but, you know, it needs to be talked about. Bring bringing fiber back. You're like the Ainsley Harry of this cooking. <laughs> very overexcited. Um, and you know, we're just starting to learn about the importance of fermented foods, but we should caveat all of this by saying that there isn't um, a huge amount of scientific research on fermented foods. One of the main reasons for that is that you know, clinical trials are very expensive. There's a lot of big bold claims like kombucha as the magic elixir of youth and vitality. And unfortunately the science just isn't there yet, but we think they taste great anyway. Yeah. So, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, now, historically, food was fermented because people didn't have fridges, so it was often made with a brine um, and with salt. Um, but uh, fermented foods, as Lisa said, are also really tasty. Now it does take some time to get used to the taste i would say it's probably more on the sour taste palette but you can definitely um build it up and in some ferments it actually increases the food's nutritional value which is like win-win all round um now when bacteria and yeast ferment food they produce something called metabolites and um, these metabolites include lactic acid vitamins and uh, ex expo exopolysaccharides which is basically sugar molecules, um, which may support our health, as Lisa said, but we're still understanding just how and why that could possibly be. be. Now, lots of foods can be fermented, such as dairy. So if you've heard of things like kefir, um, fish can also be fermented. So like 
fermented herring, pickled herring. Is that what we had, Lisa? Yeah, we did have that in Sweden. And it was what tiny, delicious. Um, I think I ate too much of it and it sort of took the roof of my mouth off. Like one of those. Right. Great. You really pitched a good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, I just had far too much of it. <laughs> vegetables could also be fermented, as you'll see today, cereals and fruits. Um, and yeah, the, the ferments, there's a sort of sliding scale. So man-made versus homemade um, have very different qualities and also how it's stored and what it's made from. So it's, it's very variable. But today we are going to talk a bit about sauerkraut, which is the one that Lisa and I can do, which means almost everyone will be able to do it. Um, also... Caveat, that is the science lesson very much over. Um, yeah, if you want to learn more, then there is a lot on the Women's Health website and our website as well. Um, Ger- little fact for you, sauerkraut is actually German for sour cabbage, which I understand does not sound hugely appealing. Um, but the sugars in the cabbage basically are converted into lactic, lactic acids and that serves as a preservative. Now, it's super easy to make, isn't it, Loz? How would you go about making sauerkraut? How would one go about making sauerkraut? <laughs> one? As Lisa said, it is literally cabbage in a jar. So this is um, one cabbage, and we do 2% of the cabbage weight in salt. Um, and then we take a mixing bowl, we massage the cabbage so it makes its own brine, um, and then we tightly pack it into one of these jars, pop a weight on top so that it's submerged, and then you just leave it on the side for seven to 14 days, depending on how tangy you like it. Um, and um, you need to burp it, don't you? Burp it like a baby. To release the air. So we do burp it like a baby. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> um, that. Also, you'll quite often see in fermenting videos that massaging is called masticating not to be confused with the other word that sounds like that. Um, you do have to um, massage it for quite a long time though, don't you? It has yeah. to be quite juicy. Yeah, quite juicy. So I'd say up to 10 minutes, it's really good on the uh, backs of the arms as well when you're massaging. Workout. Um, that was the mistake that we kept making in the beginning, Lisa, before, before we had Lauren as our guru. We just <laughs> weren't, we weren't massaging it for long enough, so it wasn't juicy enough. So it really has to be like that sort of that much juice in the bottom, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. We have a lot of those how-to videos on our websites. So uh, on our website, so yeah. So there. I know we what we're making today sounds absolutely next level rando, <laughs> and that's because it is. But it does really work. And um, so basically, we're making sauerkraut brownies, no bake, so you don't bake them. So it's like two random elements to it. <laughs> <laughs> they are <laughs> gluten-free um, and dairy-free. But at the gut stuff, we do cater for all. We're not saying that you have to be vegan, gluten-free and dairy-free, but these just so happen to be. Um, and we do love recipes that are simple ways to add more ferments into your day. Um, you know, if you have kids or potentially someone that has a slight aversion to fermented foods and um, they don't like the idea of it, um, these are quite hidden in the brownies i would say not i you know i think we should ferment should be celebrated loud and proud on top of things <laughs> but other people aren't of that opinion not on board yet um, and we also um add in mixed seeds to increase your plant-based variety and um, now if you follow, follow us already you'll see that that's something that we harp on about a lot we should be having 30 different types of plant-based um f- so fruit vegetables nuts seeds and um, whole grains a week um uh, so this is a good contribution if you get some mixed seeds. You've probably got ticking about four or five off there. Um, now, Lauren, what do we need for the brownies? So it's super simple. Equipment-wise, you just need a chopping board, a knife, a blender, and then also a baking tray. But it can be any size, size this baking tray because they're just going to be smushed into the baking tray before they go in the fridge. So it can be any size. Um, and then ingredients, we just need 60 grams of sauerkraut. But if you're unsure of the combination, you can start with the 30 grams of sauerkraut and kind of build up once you realize that the tastes do go together. So it doesn't need to be 60 grams to start with. Then we've got 400 grams of dates, which I'm going to remove the stones shortly. Um, And then 80 grams of ground almonds, 80 grams of the mixed seeds, which are in there. Um, Three tablespoons of cacao, a pinch of salt, (laughs) <laughs> and then also just a handful of walnuts. So more nuts as well. Excellent. Yeah, at the top. So I'm going to start by um, chopping the sauerkraut. 
so I guess that one of the most common misconceptions around fermenting is the level of difficulty. People think that you should be like um, in a lab, um, alchemy, white lab coats, all of this stuff. But actually, once you've got your first jar of sauerkraut on the go, you're over the biggest hurdle. And after that, it's all about trial and error. And, you know, when you think about it, it's not a hugely expensive experiment uh, to trial and error. Like, it's just different cabbages that you want to try with. Um, and I guess one factor that causes your biggest variation in ferments um, is that the cold winter months will slow fermentation down, while warm summer months will speed it up. Many, many a sourdough starter has bubbled away in my house in the summer. Um, but whatever time of year it is, important to keep your ferments out of direct sunlight. Um, and unfortunately, like this is, you know, Lauren gets a lot of very troublesome SOS calls from us that are like, oh, there's mold on the top of my circuit. Am I okay to eat it? Um, and it's important to know the difference between mold and cam yeast. Um, by that, we do not mean a yeast that is not angry. K A H M, cam yeast, um, which is basically a thin, white, crinkly film with no fuzz, is often yeast. And that can be actually just. The cam yeast can be taken off from the surface really calmly and mm -hmm. the ferment will be still really safe to eat. Now, mold, on the other hand, no, we don't want that. That's usually raised, fuzzy. It could be black, white, green, pink or blue, pretty much any colour of the rainbow. And should that crop up, I'm sorry, but it's bye-bye, birdie, to that ferment. And um, we do have troubleshooting as well at, where you can have a look and, you know, I'm sure Lauren will be on hand to ask to answer any questions, but you know, many a WhatsApp group has been filled with some moldy sauerkraut. Yes, um, and as you begin to ferment more, ferment more, because once you pop, you just can't stop. And then you're like, oh, I want to make kefir, I want to make this. Um, a good old fermenting schedule is good. Just simple pen and paper is great. Um, so yeah, what should, what, what's next? Sorry, I went on a bit on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just started by pitting these dates. And so I'm literally just taking this, I'm using my hands to do it, to just take the stones out. Um, now I will say, if you are watching this and you've never fermented before, don't worry, that was definitely us. Um, so when it comes to ferments, just we're at the gut stuff, we're all about simple swaps. So try just switching a preservative laden drink. I'll not go into the brands and um, that don't go your, do your gut bugs any favors to maybe a flavored water kefir or kombucha. And um, yeah, we haven't, we are, we're sort of focusing on um, the fermented veg today, but also fermented drinks are hugely popular. And um, just have a couple of jars of fermented vegetables in the fridge and um, ready to add, like we sort of pop it on salads, stews, anything, just use it as a condiment, condiment really. Um, and again, as we said earlier, a great way to add more variety in. Swap white bread for sourdough. I mean, that's a no-brainer. and is really simple. Um, and if you're short on time, something that I did, um, that I do quite a lot uh, when I am super busy, is just doing fermented garlic, which is one of the easiest ferments you can do at home. Um, and you can add that to hummus. What else could you do with fermented garlic, Lauren? I don't, Lauren, I just normally make... You can have it as, as you can have it on the side of like a roast of vegetables is always really nice. So like yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, you can. I suppose it doesn't have to be hummus. You can make any sauce with it, couldn't you? you can make any. Yeah, exactly. You can make any sauce. You can add it to tzatziki. Yeah, as you say, hummus on the side of vegetables. Just, I mean, I love garlic just as it is. I don't know what you're like, but I'll. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, snack there. Half, half an avocado, crushed garlic, olive oil, salt. Thank you. Yeah. Thank also, you very much. You can also ferment garlic in honey, which is great on like parsnips and carrots and stuff. Also doubles up as a lava, lava lamp. Do you remember those from the 90s? <laughs> and the garlic sort of bubbles up and, you know, uh, we also do home interiors um, and that is in the form of a lava lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Okay. okay, so with, uh, uh, how is the stone removal going? It is, it's complete. So I'm gonna, so next step, all you're doing is taking your, getting your blender and you're popping your dates in. You're gonna add your ground almonds. Lisa, you know, it would have been funny if we were actually doing this with Lauren. That would be great. We say it's simple, but then, you know, with you and I, a lot could go wrong. 
<laughs> two meals I have with Alana do not cook with her and do not get in her car. <laughs> two, things are, two things for your own safety and sanity should not happen in life. So I think as mere Jiminy Cricket style observers on your shoulder, more than happy to just stay put and stay hands on them. Thanks. <laughs> Next we're adding the seeds into the blender and then the cacao. So Laura, what sort of blender can you use? Because I always get confused when a recipe just says blender. Can I use a hand blender? Have I got to use some like expensive thing? That, no. Doesn't need to be expensive at all. I wouldn't use a hand blender for this one, but you can use like a Nutribullet, like a, like a smoothie maker, one of those types, or just your regular um, kitchen blender, or even like a mini chopper, but then you can just use it in a few, you can do a few different batches of it till you've got the consistency. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Imagine uh, sometimes... Um, uh, you know, like a closed off for this one. Nobody wants a medical date in their eye. Quite a lot of missiles, yeah. I would imagine, if it was closed off because oh, a hand blender. So. Could... Yeah, <laughs> you could get seeds all over the kitchen and all yeah. that one. <laughs> Eat them as you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How to get your plant based variety? Hmm. <laughs> Hungry hippos. <laughs> <laughs> we digress. We digress. <laughs> yes, so we'll pop that into the blender and then we're just going to whiz that round until it's into a paste. So we've got a, here's some I made earlier moments and this is now our paste. Blue Peter style, I like it. Blue Peter style. And then we're going to take the chopped um, sauerkraut from earlier. What you didn't see that I did was just pat some um, tissue and kitchen roll over the sauerkraut just to remove some of the excess liquid. So we're going to pop the chopped sauerkraut into the blended mixture. You can just use your hands just to like mix it all together or fork or a spoon, whatever you prefer. More microbes in the hand. Exactly. I didn't get the memo of the gold necklace, gals. <laughs> what? Not for the gold necklace. We did get the uh, clothes memo. Yeah, I'm feeling very left out. <laughs> and how, what was this um, you, you said earlier about scushion. Are we on the scushion, squidging stage? Scushion is the next, yeah, okay. scushion is the next step. We're going to smush into the technical term. Lauren, are you able to put your camera down so we can see the smush? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, well, now we're going to get your laptop. Like, like, oh like, no. Okay. Let me just wipe my hands and I'll try. <laughs> Nobody wants, a date or, nobody wants well nobody wants that sort of date on their oh, life right. this is fantastic Lauren as much as we like seeing your face <laughs> yeah you want to see what I'm doing here right Good. right so we're putting it in some sort of casserole dish yeah this is a casserole dish um because that's what I had <laughs> I see. you can go into any dish kind of like this sort of size so I'd say yeah this is kind of like four by eight Eight inches. This is um, harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, same. I thought it was going to be more like a runnier paste. Oh, no. No, it's hard because it's no bake. This is... You, uh, you could literally just eat, take that big thing and start eating it yourself like Bruce Bogart yeah, or this, Matilda. This is, this is ready to eat now. We're good, we're good to go. Um, or you could make it into balls as well if you prefer and kind of have like an energy bite. Right, that's a great show. Um, Bruce Bogtrot or whatever became of him. What happened to him at the end again? He sort of ate the cake. He was, if anyone doesn't know, this is Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Bogtrot or of Matilda fame. Um, the one that was forced to eat a cake at the school assembly. Um, you know, could have been, a, it wasn't actually, it wouldn't have been a punishment if not for the cake was the size of the UK. Um, what happened to him in the end? I didn't think he was just happy. We just sort of ate the cake. They all lived happily ever after, I think. Do you remember worrying about the cake going in his little... Oh, well, Lauren, what are you doing here? here? This okay. looks more like... More <laughs> just using the back of the spoon just to get it right to the edges. Okay. Um, what was the word you used again? I think we need to use that more often. Smooch. 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 Yeah. Are you smush? Smush? Smush. Smush. Technical it's a bit onomatopoeic, isn't it? Yeah. Quite like Happy that. Smush. And then we're just going to smooshing. Now we're going to add the um, handful of walnuts that we have and just sprinkle them on top. You could perhaps put a loved, loved one's name in the walnuts. 
good. I wanted to sort of pass on this for Valentine's Day. Here's your sauerkraut no bake brownie. <laughs> I'd like that. Yeah, that looks good. Um, so just to recap, essentially what we do is put it in a blender and then put it in a dish. Yeah. Just keep, keep it. <laughs> that, that is, yeah, that is it. Um, it's something very simple for you guys. It's my kind of recipe. <laughs> just keep the sauerkraut in the and mix it in. But that's it. That's literally your sauerkraut brownie. That's it's it. Done. Yeah. So this can go in the fridge now. And for half an hour. Half an hour. Okay. And then what do you, yeah. you know, how would you just chop it up into squares? Yeah, I'd literally put, put this in the fridge for half an hour, bring it out, and that will that cool it down so it'll be easier to cut so it won't stick to the knife when you're cutting it. And then um, just take it out of the dish. Oh, I did line this, sorry, I didn't say that. I did line this with baking paper so you can just take it out of the dish and then just chop it into, I'd say, about eight to ten portions. And can you keep it in the fridge until you want to eat? I mean, I'll probably just eat it all in one go, to be totally honest. Um, yeah. But do you, if you did want to do that, do you just, can, you, can it be kept in the fridge for how long? Yeah, if you just keep it into the fridge for um, up to three days. I'd keep it, once once you've um, taken it out of the container and then sliced it up, I'd pop it into an airtight container, then pop it in the fridge and then keep it in there for up to three to five days. Right. Great. Fantastic. That's absolutely brilliant. Can, can we see your face again, Loz? Um, I was just going to ask you about some other ways to, um, you know, any other easy fermenting recipes that people can hide slash, you know, show um, sauerkraut in. I think, you know, there's a potato salad. Yes. So we've got a herby potato salad, which is a traditional kind of potato salad with lots of mixed herbs to increase like plant um, based variety. And then we just mix in a bit of the sauerkraut which is super easy as well so that's just mixed into a potato salad it can go mixed into any salad i'd say or on the side um it's also really great on top of pancakes so if you do a savory pancake i like adding a spoonful of sauerkraut on top of there as well yeah yeah no i love sauerkraut and it's quite random um a tuna salad Oh, not tried that, but I'll give it a go. This goes really well. And yeah, see, when, I mean, once your sauerkraut's been made, does that stay in the fridge or does it stay out, out and about? So once you've got to your um, taste level, desired level of tang, um, then pop it, yeah, then you change the little burping lid here onto a just a screw top lid and then you pop that into the fridge to store. And if somebody were to start to well enjoy this cook along and to you know want to experiment if you've got to the <laughs> end yeah experiment with the sauerkraut what other things could you put in to sort of jazz it up because you know i've tried a red cabbage not so good for the fingernails but it does give it a bit of a um on the masticating um but it does give it a sort of sweeter profile Yes, so you can, yes, you can, as you say, you can use the red cabbage. We actually put fennel seeds into our sauerkraut recipe, which I think is a really nice flavour in there. I would admit that if you're going to make these brownies, though, that has a lot going on in it. There's a lot going on there. That wouldn't go very well. Um, but yeah, you can mix it up with lots of different spices. Um, and like the thing is with ferments is that there's so much room to be creative. Mm -hmm. And also, like you can try, if you're not sure, like just give it a go because... You never know. It could work like a sauerkraut brownie works. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This no. is the thing. That's the prime example of sometimes the random ones are the best. I, yeah. I actually used to work in an ice cream shop and I used to make tuna and banana pizzas and I'm not lying. <laughs> I, I cannot when, you, when, you, when you worked in a chip shop, well, so what was it made when, we were, when you were a teenager when you worked in a chip shop? Deep fried Kinder Bueno? Yeah. Also, Did not it didn't stay together it didn't hold together very well and um, also cannot speak to the nutritional profile of that <laughs> no 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 no, no, um, no recommend but, <laughs> but yeah you know go wild get experimental another thing to experiment with and um, nothing to do with this is different herbs and spices also count to your 30 plant plant-based variety um, a week which is great so you know don't go overboard and start you know my boyfriend always says to me too much flavor too much flavor and stuff and 
to be fair to him, there probably is because I'm trying to up the count. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's another little tip to get your plant based. Yeah. And start with with fermented food. Start with simple sauerkraut, um, and you know, buy in sourdough potentially. And then, like your other end of the syrup that gets more complicated is like your kimchi, and um, making sourdough yourself quite hard. Um, yeah, so start. There's a sliding scale. I'd say on the fermenting steaks. Um, it's like having a, a little pet, you know, if you didn't, yeah. if you don't want to get a dog, it's like a, a sea monkey or yeah. a tamagotchi. Similar. Tamagotchis are out. Well, they were out <laughs> 20 years ago, 10 years ago. <laughs> fermented foods are in. Yeah. I talk to my ferment, so it... it <laughs> 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 that's what you make them for um thank you so much for tuning in guys as you can see um, a super simple recipe i understand this has been 70 percent chat 30 percent cooking but i hope that you've learned something and that you can go away and make this super simply so thank you for yeah tuning in with us let's do it again